A recent Nebraska Extension training program educated agriculture workers and producers to better manage corn and soybeans. According to Keith Gluen, Nebraska Extension educator, the field crop scout training began in the mid-1990s because of a demand for entry-level education in crop production. The program includes topics such as insect and weed scouting, crop diseases, and the growth and development stages in corn and soybeans. We spoke with Keith at the training and began by asking him about the different groups of attendees. We realized after a few years we had two audiences and one was the uh, individuals who manage co-ops, manage farm service centers, who make the decisions on the control of pests. And our second audience was their employees during the summer months, who most often were students at the university or high school graduates who were working um, for these managers. And they were living with mom and dad because of free room and board. And they needed to make a little money for uh, expenses the following school year. But they didn't have a lot of knowledge or background uh, as far as uh, what goes on in a corn and soybean field. In fact, uh, I polled the audience this morning and about a fourth of our audience has taken a class in Agronomy 101, if you would. And so we probably got a lot of psychology and history majors in class, but they need to know what's going on in the cornfield. And one of the most important things is they need to effectively communicate what they're seeing and experiencing in the, in the corn and soybean fields. And so we provide this introductory level training and they get to go home with a great offering of resource materials that they can go back on and look up and, and confirm what they heard and, and, and saw in the training. At the training, corn and soybean growers are able to learn how to improve their overall yield production. From scouting insects and identifying weeds to simply understanding the growth and development of corn and soybeans, growers are able to make better management decisions based on specific growth stages. When I say knee-high corn, your knees are a different level than my knees. And so um, we know that if we apply certain um, weed control products, certain fungicides, at the wrong stage of growth, it can have a, uh, an important effect on final yield, and in some cases, adverse effect. And so it's very important that they know what they're seeing and how to communicate it to the person that's going to decide what to you know, apply as far as a, a a pest control product. And so we cover uh, the growth of corn, uh, for example. We spend a lot of time on corn because corn uh, is um, very complex in nature compared to maybe soybeans, although some would argue that soybeans are a complex uh, plant, and they, and they are in a, in a sense. But we talk about uh, the vegetative growth stages and how to identify those stages and then how uh, management decisions can influence yield even in those vegetative stages of growth. And then of course we, we get into reproductive stages of growth and, and those can be very important as well based on final yield. And we talk about um, how the uh, scout needs to know the difference between the R1 stage of growth and the R4 stage of growth and communicate that effectively to their managers. We talk about growing degree days and how in corn plant, uh, the development of that corn plant is based on primarily temperature and growing degree days and how in soybean production uh, that isn't as important. Soybeans may not be as complex as corn, but they also require specific management requirements during their growth and development. Well, soybeans, of course, are a legume or a, or a dicot and grass is a, is a, a grass or monocot. Um, and, and soybeans, um, although temperature uh, does to some extent influence their development, is to a much lesser extent than with corn. And so we talk about the importance of uh, the different vegetative stages of growth and how um, the soybean plant grows and develops differently than the corn plant. It, it has a uh, somewhat of a taproot system uh, whereas corn is a fibrous root system. Uh, we talk about how to identify those different vegetative stages. And then with corn, we're talking about the, um, the collar method, uh, sort of like the collar on your shirt. When that leaf is fully extended, then there's a collar um, on the stalk, if you would, that surrounds the leaf. 
and that's when we designate it as a leaf stage. So V3 corn, you've got three leaves that have a collar around it. And with soybeans, we're talking about the cotyledons, uh, where we talk about emergence, and then we, we get into the unifoliate leaves, the, the next stage of development with the soybean plant. And then from there on, we're talking about trifoliates, where we have three leaflets, okay? And we talk about what happens if we have hail damage or what happens if we uh, scorch the plant with a, a herbicide, for example, or, or we have insect um, damage, how that influences the development and subsequent final yield of that soybean, as well as a corn plant. And so soybeans have uh, vegetative growth stages and reproductive stages simultaneously. So when we get to the R1 stage of growth on a, a soybean plant, which is flowering, we can also have the additional vegetative stages of developing on the plant at the same time. And with soybeans, we talk about how important that R3 growth stage is, where we have um, a pod on the upper four uh, nodes of the plant that's um, uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, in size and how the soybean plant at that time needs to be really happy for, for outstanding yields. And by, by defining happiness, I mean it has adequate water, soil moisture, and nutrients, as well as sunlight, of course, which we don't have a lot of control over. Mm -hmm.